and American in Paris. The Tony Award winner is in Oklahoma City this week. It runs through Sunday. You can find it at the Civic Center Music Hall. You can find ticket information at okcbroadway.com uh, along with an American in Paris, broadway.com. It started Tuesday nights and the man making it happen from the musical side of things joins us now in the Oklahomans video studio. We're talking with David Andrews Rogers. You say to call you Dar. Yeah, it's a nickname, you know. Well, it's very nice to meet you, sir. It's Welcome to the you. studio. Thanks. Um, we're going to get into this gentleman's career here because uh, it's a very diverse, accomplished career. But first of all, as I mentioned, American in Paris started last night at the Civic Center Music Hall. How did it go? My gosh, this uh, the Oklahoma City audiences are the best. We had a great response, full house. Um, there's still some tickets left, but we had a great house. Uh, they really seem to come uh, prepared to uh, take the journey with us, take the, uh, take the trip with us. Um, that theater is such a great space anyway. It's, um, visually, it's a, it's a delight. The sound is great. Um, we're just thrilled to be in Oklahoma City. You're the, musical, uh, the music director and conductor uh, on the national tour of American in Paris. Uh, and I say that national tour, you have a lot of local connections. You've been in that space at the Civic Center Music Hall many times. It's kind of a summer theater home for me. I've been fortunate enough to be music director, conductor for Lyric Theater for over 40 shows. I actually made my debut with Lyric 25 years ago. Wow. Yeah, in 1993. And um, thrilled to be back. I also am incredibly grateful that uh, just about every season the Oklahoma City Philharmonic brings me in to guest conduct. So that, that space is, is really sort of a home for me. It's nice. Well, take us behind the baton. Uh, wh what are you seeing from your position there, right center stage, below the stage? Lots of feet. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, where I'm sitting in the pit, I'm eye line directly with all of the dancers' feet. Um, and it is a very extremely um, involved dancing show. There's a lot of ballet, there's tap, there's, there's all sorts of, of storytelling through dance. Um, but I'm, I really have the best seat in the house for somebody who doesn't get to sit all night long. <laughs> what are you looking for? Um, in other words, when you're working, what are you, wh where are your eyes going among your performers in front of you, but then also the performers on the stage? Um, everything. Is the, is the real answer. I, when they're dancing, I really am watching their feet. I, um, singers express themselves with their voices and with their, uh, with their eyes and with their emotions through their, through their voice. Uh, but dancers express their storytelling through their feet and their hands and their, the way their bodies move through space. So I really don't ever take my eyes off the stage. Um, the, the show is very complex. Christopher Wielden, our director, one of the most magnificent choreographers and directors that I've ever had the pleasure of working with, uh, but his work is so detailed uh, that the music and the movement is so beautifully coordinated that I'm constantly watching to see where we are, where we're going next, where we're going to be four bars from now, where we're going to be on the next chorus. Um, somebody once asked me, what am I thinking about when I'm conducting the show, and I sort of jokingly but truthfully said I'm kind of doing math the whole time uh, there's a girl dancing and she's about to be lifted up in the air and I know that when she lands back in the leading man's arms that needs to be a moment musically that needs to needs to be a, a punctuated moment musically so four measures before that two pages before that I'm calculating where she is on stage and how to get where she's going musically at the same time she gets there physically. Does that mean the pacing of, of how you're leading the musicians? Let's, let's speed up here a little bit. Absolutely. It's a, that's the beautiful thing about theater as opposed to film or, or anything like that or television. Um, it's a living, breathing art form. So yes. the show is the same every night and completely different, completely every, different night. every night. Completely different every night. Yeah. But that's what makes it exciting. That's what makes it uh, live theater. Um, has a, an element of danger to it because you never know what's going to happen. You never know if it's going to be a little faster one night, a little slower one night. Somebody says a line of dialogue that gets a huge laugh, so you have to stretch the music slightly to accommodate it. Or somebody says something just a little faster th uh, in their speaking voice that particular night, and the music still has to coordinate with that. Because so much of the storytelling is with the music as well as with the text, as well as with the feet. And 
the audience gives us their perspective, how they respond to things changes how we deliver it slightly every night. That's fascinating. I, I'm assuming that the, uh, the performers on the stage are looking at you as a bit of a, relying on you as perhaps a bit of a safety net that you have their back. Well, that ideally, yeah, absolutely. The, um, what I usually think of it as is it's a dance. And sometimes they're leading, and sometimes I'm leading, and sometimes neither one of us are leading. The music is leading us. Uh, but we are always constantly in touch. Even if they're not looking directly at me, and even if I'm not making eye contact with them because they're making eye contact with the person they're in the scene with, um, we're still in touch with one another. I'm sort of the unseen other person on stage with them. Well, I guess that's a good follow-up question for me at this point. What are the performers uh, what are they looking for from you? How do they, is, is it, uh, you know, eye, facial expressions? You know, are they, are they talking with you, uh, signaling perhaps somehow? We're constantly making uh, small adjustments in each other's work based on what the other is doing. So um, even if they don't make direct eye contact with me, they always sense my presence, I always sense their presence. Uh, they're listening, obviously, to the music, just like the audience is, uh, and sometimes the music is driving them. More frequently, they're driving the music. And it's my job to make sure that all that is seamless and that for the audience, um, if they come Tuesday night versus if they come Friday night versus if they come next week in San Antonio, um, they're still seeing the, the larger architecture of the piece constant but the small details different every night. Chatting with David Andrews Rogers, you can catch him as music director and conductor of American in Paris, the Civic Center Music Hall. It runs through Sunday again, okcbroadway.com. We uh, appreciate our friends, Jody Haley sitting over there, her help. Uh, okcbroadway.com for ticket information along with more information. Uh, at an American in Paris, broadway.com. The gentleman we're chatting with here, you can find more information on his website, maestrodar.com. What got you into this? Oh gosh, um, it's, it's the only thing I ever wanted to do. I remember my parents uh, introduced my brother and myself to everything. We, um, we played Little League, we were in the Scouts, we were involved in our church, we were involved in, in community activities, and we were introduced to music. Uh, we both played the trumpet, we both played the piano, um, we, we were taken to football games, baseball games, and the theater, and the symphony, and, you know, well, that's everything. Great. They, they really, uh, their opinion was, we're going to introduce you to everything, and you will choose what really resonates with you. You'll choose the path that you want to take. Um, I remember going to shows, I grew up in Texas, and I remember going to shows at the Dallas Summer Musicals, and um, I always say, I, I always wanted to sit in a box seat. And it wasn't because I thought I was fancy, and it wasn't because I thought they were, you know, such great seats. I could see the conductor from the box seat. And I remember when I was growing up, people would say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be the guy in the tux. And, um, and I got lucky enough to, to get to do that. My dad and my mother told my brother and myself both, uh, find something you love to do, find a way to make a couple of dollars doing it. You'll never work a day in your life, and you'll be the richest man in town. And I think that that's the secret of life. I get to do what I love to do. I never, ever uh, regret or, or begrudge. I'm never tired. Even when I'm tired, I'm not tired because the show gives me energy. The audience gives me energy. And yet, I also get to travel all over the world doing something I love to do. Oklahoma City has been a, a musical theater home for me for many, many years. And, and my career gives me the opportunity to come back here once or twice a year, every year. That's, that's an awesome gift. I was driving back from Chicago uh, a couple weekends ago and listening to a podcast. Uh, and someone was interviewing Malcolm Gladwell, the author, uh, about his career. And the guy asked him, hey, uh, what was your career goal? And Malcolm paused and said, <clears throat> I don't think I have a career goal. I just don't want to be bored. Oh, I Which like is that. a different way of, of looking at yeah. career and life. And, and in your case, it was passion. Absolutely. When, when you found music, did you find it was passion and interest, or was it talent, or was it a mix of both? Um, did it come easy to you? I think that if you're doing what you're supposed to do, it comes easy to you. Um, I was very, very lucky that I had terrific training when I was young. I, I was, was blessed with a little bit of talent and I did my best to, to use it um, as, 
as fully and, and completely as possible. Uh, but I also got lucky. Luck, luck plays a great role in all our lives. Um, the theater has always been a home for me. Music has always been a home for me. And I never thought of it as work. So even when I was a kid, when I was you know, practicing the piano or practicing the trumpet or whatever I was doing, I wasn't practicing. I was just playing. I was just making music and, and finding the joy. And hours would go past, and you know they'd sort of have to make me take a break. Um, but I think that if you're doing what you love to do, um, you're the lucky ones. And I get to do that every day. I mentioned he's an accomplished uh, performer, conductor, musician. Um, he's performed internationally, uh, Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center. Uh, I want to talk about Vegas and Debbie Gibson. How's she to work with? <laughs> uh, Deb is is one of my favorite people's on, pe people's one of my favorite people on the planet. <laughs> She's good she people. She is a remarkable, remarkable artist. She's a fantastic boss. She's a wonderful friend. Uh, we actually met in Oklahoma City. Really? Uh, we were. Uh, I was asked to come to Lyric Theater, uh, and uh, music direct and conduct their production of uh, Chicago a number of years ago. And, uh, and Deb was, was cast as one of the stars of the show. I'd, I'd never met her. I didn't really know her music. I, I, I'm a little bit older than that generation, so it wasn't the music that I grew up on. Uh, but I met this remarkable young woman, and she was a terrific actor. She was terrific in Chicago, and we became friends. And she said, as frequently theater people do, we're going to work together for the rest of our lives. We're going to, you know, I want, I want you to work with me. And I said, great, I'd love that, whatever. And sure <laughs> enough, three months later, she called and said, I'm as good as my word. Let's do something. And so we've done everything together. We've, we played Carnegie Hall together. We did uh, concerts in Singapore together. We've, we've toured the country. We, uh, we did a wonderful six-week engagement in Atlantic City. Um, and she's just, uh, lest we forget, 14 years old, she wrote, wrote, sang, and produced a number one hit song. It's still a record that's never been beaten. You know, and she's still writing. She's still creating. She's still a theater artist. She's um, she just completed filming a Hallmark television movie. She does a lot of uh, film and television work, and um, and as a boss, she is the most generous collaborator and and wonderful artist I've ever worked with. And as a friend, she's incredibly loyal. What more can you ask for? No, that's good to hear. That's yeah. you know, you, you see some of the the stars sometimes and you wonder, hey, I wonder how they're really like. Yeah. You know, what they're really like. Well that's good to hear. Um, one final topic for you. Uh, life on the road. Do you enjoy it? Love it. Love it. One of the beauties of life on the road is I've been doing it long enough. I've uh, all told probably been on the road about 17 years of my career. And uh, as a result notwithstanding Lyric Theater and the Oklahoma City Philharmonic. I've been in Oklahoma City with national tours several times. Um, Chicago, LA, San Francisco, Seattle, Louis, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, all of these are places that I've played multiple times and as a result I have family and friends, chosen family, uh, favorite restaurants, favorite bars, favorite shopping areas sure. in all of these cities. So I have hometowns all over the world. And I, and I think that that's a great, great gift of this business. Um, I come back to Oklahoma City and feel like I'm home. But, you know, last week I was in Sacramento a couple of weeks ago and I felt like I was home. Last week I was in Austin, I felt like I was home. And getting a chance to spend a week, two weeks, five weeks, three months in a city, uh, you, you meet people, they become part of your life, and, and the opportunity to revisit those people every six months, every year, every two years is, uh, is a remarkable, remarkable gift, and I'm incredibly grateful. Well, congratulations to you. I know that's a lot of hard work, even though uh, it may be fun. I know that takes a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work. Congratulations to Thanks. you on all of your accomplishments. You can catch this gentleman, uh, David Andrews Rogers. American in Paris, playing at the Civic Center Music Hall through Sunday night. I need to mention that there are a limited number of $30 tickets to all of the performances uh, for students, educators, senior citizens, and military personnel. Again, American in Paris through Sunday at the Civic Center Music Hall. Sir, Dar, uh, <laughs> I enjoyed the conversation. Very nice to meet you, and uh, have fun this week in Oklahoma City. Thanks. Come see us.